Uh, thanks for joining us today here with Laurent Charvin, Peter Weigand, and Pascaline Letatier. And we're just waiting for Arnaud to join us. Um, but before we get started, we will uh, just basically go through a little format here. We'll do uh, kind of start with a little bit of the, uh, the history of the relationship uh, that everyone here has uh, with Laurent. Uh, do a little history of the domain and uh, Chateauneuf. And then we'll do a little tasting and we can do a little question and answer uh, after the tasting format and then uh, yeah just kind of finish it out with any other questions and uh, take it from there. So I'm going to cut out here and uh, I'll let you guys get started. Okay well thank, thank you very much uh, Brendan and uh, uh, welcome to, to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I, this is our first uh, virtual uh, tasting and interview. Um, then I think it's going to be very, very uh, enjoyable, educational for everyone. Um, I want to especially uh, recognize Brendan for all of his work in putting this together um, and uh, doing, organizing it so well. And then I'd like to begin with a special thank you to uh, Pascaline Le Peltier, uh, Mayor Ouvrier de France, uh, for joining us today on this very special, making it a very special occasion, even more special. Um, it's a great honor and privilege to have you with us. Actually. Thanks. And um, then I want to turn to, um, well, this is our first, as I said. And um, so Brendan was thinking, who who would you want to have as your as the person in the in your own in the first uh, interview and patient? And I thought about that for a very brief time. And because the answer to me is very evident. Um, it goes back a long time. Um, a vigneron with whom I've worked now for nearly 30 years. And starting on the vintage that has now reached 30 years. Um, and that is Laurent Charvin. Um, we have had many, many good years together. He honored me with great wines every vintage, so always helps. Um, and if I could, I would like to go back to to our beginning, Laurent. Um, welcome, and thank you for joining us. What I think it was January or February, early in 1992 that, that we met, was it not? Yes, it was in February 92, to be exact. It was uh, in my estate, in my cellar, in my small cellar. It was, and you taste uh, for the first time the vat number one, 62 hectoliters. I remember that exactly. It was Chateau Park, 1990. And, uh, and it was a surprise for me to, to receive you because so you arrive uh, nowhere from, no, from USA and, and nowhere in my estate. And uh, it was the first time uh, I received an importer. Uh, it was my first vintage. It was my first Chateau de Pop. And And uh, it was the rest of all uh, our blending we have made. And the rest was sold uh, six months earlier in bulk to negotiate. And we have kept that just to start the bottling because I was one petal more. And my father said, okay, if you want to try. And, uh, and you arrived. It was a surprise, but you arrived. Well, you, you know how um, I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You, 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 can, you can speak. Well, okay. the, the, how I came to find you was very interesting for me. Um, we had no Chateauneuf du Pop producer in our portfolio at the time. And there were, there were no kind of... all the night, Right now we have all these magazines and journals and references, but back then there was nothing. And um, I read in the um, competition of the uh, uh, Concours General in Paris mm -hmm. um, of the results of the different appellations. And the Chateau Neuf du Pop, there were, there were three mentions. Um, two of them I knew quite well, but the one that won the gold medal at the Concours General, I had never heard of. It was Domaine Charvin. So we were able to find phone number and address and Marie and I went to visit you and then we met this young man and we tasted this most marvelous wine and if you remember I asked you 
Now, can I take a nice quantity of this and would you bottle it for me without filtering? And what was the expression on your face? It was, I think you were, I think you were wondering about me from the start, but it, it all worked out. But, but, but to be honest, I, I remember exactly the moment and, um, um, you know, you know, me, I arrived in 1990, I, I was, I spent two years in, in Burgundy uh, to speak for the studies and I go back and when I arrive, my father tell me, okay, you have made studies, you will do the wines. I spent all my young time in the vines, so I was not uh, disturbed by that and I start to produce wine. And um, we were sure it will be impossible to work with the United States because I was having no experience. So we, we have, he was having a bad picture about uh, uh, American market. We were sure that he was obliged to have um, a big, big filtration, very uh, st sterile filtration to export wines. And uh, you was uh, the, the perfect person and you arrive at the right time and, and you tell me, no, no, me, I'm interesting to work without filtration, no problems. So. Uh, uh, you was the right man at the right place, and me, uh, I was very happy to meet you, and um, and um, and it has helped me uh, all around my life, uh, my wine life, because uh, I, I'm not sure if I have not met you at this time, uh, I will be here in front of you, and I will. Uh, um, I was very lucky to meet you. Well, I know that we were. We were quite taken with your wine. Uh, at that time, in my limited experience, for me, the, the reference was, was Ryoff. And there was something about, about your wine that was both reminiscent to me of, of Ryoff and of, of you know, the, the finesse of more northern uh, types of wine. Um, tell me, or tell us, uh, what it was that you did back then in, 19, in the 1990s interview with that wine and what have, what similarities between then and, and now are there? So I'm not sure to have well understand your question. You, you want to know the, the, um, the difference between now and, 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 and before or, or, or the why I have? Well, tell us, tell us about um, your winemaking I, approach that, yes. you, that you followed in 1990. Mm -hmm, and yeah. has there, have there been any major changes in it. Yeah, okay. So, um, when I come back, so, so um, you know, so the tradition uh, in Chateau du Pape uh, in the past was not, was unfiltered wines. We was not having a lot of wood. Um, it, uh, but uh, since uh, the, the end of the 80s, arrived a new, a new, um, a new fashion, barrels, extraction, and uh, destaming, and all this process. Me, um, I, I quickly, quickly realized that uh, we was in the south of France, of course. We have very dry weather, hot temperature. It's not very difficult to have tannins. It's not very difficult to have a lot of alcohol. It's not difficult to have weight and sometimes over maturity. So I was sure that it was very important to try to catch a maximum of freshness and thinness in the wines. That's why I decided to cut the stems because for me, they are very important for the balance of the wines. They, give, they, they help to give freshness. And another thing, when you keep the stems, you're, you're obliged to be very careful in, uh, when you make, uh, you, you can't make really extraction. You make more di di um, diffusion or infusion if you want. And, um, and, uh, and, and this is the reason why I, I, I have decided with my father at the beginning to, to, to work like that in the, in the cellar. And uh, another thing very important, uh, the vats, no wood. Um, we was having in the past, my father, you know, my family arrived in, uh, in this place uh, where I am today in 1851. Then start to make wines. They, they were selling the same central, central part in Berlin to negotiate, but they kept, they kept some a little quantity and they, they was aging uh, this wine in all very old barrels, very, very old. And uh, the, we was having no cooling system. Uh, the, the, bath, the cellar was very, very dry. And I was not a big fan about the aromas. It was some, sometimes madarization. So uh, I decided to, to just keep in, in that. And I tell to my father, okay, I, I, I come back. Okay, we try to bottle the wines, but no wood. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, as I know, as I say before, 
I spent two years in Burgundy. I have tasted incredible old wines, old red wines. And, but the, 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 the fashion at this time was sometimes over um, woody wines. So I was not interested about uh, uh, aromas of vanilla and so on and, and the taste of uh, wood. So uh, that's why I have decided to do that uh, when I arrived and my father was agree with me and, uh, and uh, that we, have, we have started like that. And we have not moved a lot. We, we, we continue to make no filtration and, uh, and, um, and slowly and we, uh, I, I stopped the finding. Before, at the beginning we were finding with white eggs and after we stopped. So the, the, the basic idea that you formulated in the beginning of no de-stemming, whole cluster fermentation, mm -hmm. and no wood is the, has been the trend has continued for the last 30 years. I was totally unconscious about my decision at this time. It was, uh, it was a sensation I was having and um, um, I was sure about nothing except I was very young, so I was sure about everything, of course, because I was very young. And uh, and uh, but when you are young, you okay, you believe in you more than. But but I was sure about nothing, and I really I really realized with you, Peter, with uh, three letters, um, um, uh, with uh, the rest, Gilbert um, from La Bouvier, for example, who tell me what you are doing. It's exactly the original style of the of Chateau Park, and I continue like that and. Um, uh, it was a, a wonderful for me to hear that, you know. Often I say uh, in French, on que dans les yeux de sa maman, we are beautiful just in your mother's eyes. And uh, you have been this eyes, this people, because you believe in me before I, I, I was believing in, in myself, okay? Well, that was easy, Laurent. Um, <laughs> before we go on, I wanted to make a, a special mention. Arnaud Tranche has, has joined us. Um, from restaurant Racine. Um, welcome, Arnaud. Thank you, Peter. Now, Salut, Arnaud. Laurent, who are some of the people who oh. were formative in your, you know, in, in, in um, as models to you when in, when in your winemaking, when you were studying? So, uh, uh, I recall uh, you're mentioning um, that you received a lot of encouragement from D. Julia. Um, and were there other winemakers who also encouraged you? Other winemaker, not especially at the beginning, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Um, um, you know, it's maybe it's not very. So, so I don't know if you will well understand what I mean. But in the south of France, it's not like you are um, in in as in Alsace or in uh, in Jura or in uh, in Loire. You you was not you, you was not having it's better like today really it has evolved it was you was not having a big big fraternity and uh, it was not okay Rome Valley was not popular like today everybody was fighting to make his own place so mm -hmm. I suppose mm -hmm. this is maybe one of the reasons but um, um I was having a, a small experience in wine to be honest because my father was um, a good wine, vine grower very good uh, and I respect him a lot for that but he was not having a big passion about wine he was not having a lot of wines and, and me I have disposed of wines in Burgundy um, uh, at school I'm not sure it's the right place to discover wine normally but uh, um, it's um, a special thing uh, in, in Bourgogne in, in Bonn at this time it was possible to discover many things and um, and um, and after Yes, after I have, disco I, I have tried to, to, to discover many, many producers, uh, Guy Julien helped me a lot because he, he opened many, many doors for me. Um, uh, and uh, I have quickly the possibility to taste the uh, Ven de Jamy uh, in Cote uh, And I have met Gonon, I have met uh, um, um, in Hermitage, uh, Jean Louis Chav with him. And, and, and after in Chateau de Papa, I have met. Uh, um, um, many, many producers, and I, and I have tried to taste the maximum of wine possible. And, um, and uh, slowly, I, and after 10 years, I re really realized uh, where was my, my influence, but, and who, but, but, but after, you know, I, have, I never tasted Rayas. Uh, to, uh, the first Rayas I tasted was uh, maybe 10 years after I started. 
it was me uh, and I have never met uh, Jacques Reno, for example and and uh, and, uh, and when uh, I realized how stupid I was to 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 to, to don't have the the courage to to meet him uh, I go to to um, to Henri Bono quickly and uh, I spent very good time with him a very wonderful guy incredible guy um, and uh, and uh, and uh, and after I have tried to Create maximum of wine for many many reasons, region, and um, and uh, it's uh, it's just wonderful this job because uh, with you with uh, with Arno with with Pascaline we have uh, um, you, you give the possibility to meet many many producer and uh, and now I have uh, very good friends from everywhere in France and uh, in Loire, in Alsace, in Jura, in, in Corbière, and. Uh, and uh, it's the same family. Uh, uh, uh. Peter, you make yes. Laurent, you make just the one cuvee of Chateauneuf du Pape. Yeah. You don't make a cuvee special or mm -hmm. preserve or some fancy name. Tell us uh, about that. I, I, I have always considered that um, uh, Chateauneuf du Pape was something very special. Uh, when they decide to, to, to describe Chateauneuf du Pape and uh, to create Chateauneuf du Pape, the, one of the first appellations of the world, um, they decide to make no premier cru, no grand cru. And uh, they decide to use a, maxi, a, maximum, a, a lot of cepage, we say 13, a little bit more, because you have white and red. Uh, they, 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 we, we have several kinds of soil. And in fact, Chateauneuf du Pape, for me, it's a blendy wine. I went for, for it's, it's blending. It's not. It's not a, a selection. Okay, I have nothing against guy who decide to make cuvee. It's our problem. It's a problem of our buyers. It's, everybody is free. It's not my problem. But for me, uh, like uh, another producer, like uh, Vincent Avril, uh, Claude Pape, it's the same thing. Just one cuvee because for me, Chateau de Pape is one cuvee, and I, I, I don't think even if the world are maybe too strong, um, when you make Chateau de Pape. You don't want to make um, a great uh, vin de cépage or a great uh, vin de pays. I have a lot of respect for vin de cépage, a lot of respect for the, for the vin de pays. But in, for Chateauneuf du Pape, you, have, you, you need to have something else. It's, uh, we can say in French, supplement d'âme, uh, more complexity, more. It's not especially more rich. So I decided to make just one cuvee. Uh, and um, and uh, my goal, my challenge every year is to try to, to to catch and to arrive in the vineyard to have the best level possible for each parcel, and uh, and um, and um, with process, with very simple process, who, um, help me, which help me to to have uh, in the end a, 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 a very balanced blending. Okay, I don't want to have. Everything. I don't want to prove something. Um, uh, um, I don't need to prove something to when when I make wine. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 very, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a jealous guy. Uh, so uh, me, I, I, I mean, what does that mean? Uh, an ounce. I want to produce. I want that an ounce, not too much, not too much. I don't know if I'm clear. Yeah. Now in the in the vineyard, um, what what approach do you take towards the, your viticulture? I know that you work in the vines literally virtually every day of the year. Yeah, you you see my face. Uh, I'm always in, I'm more in the in the in the vines than in the cellar. Uh, um, first thing, very important, and you know that, and 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 uh, and Pascaline and Arno too. It's totally. Um, Impossible to imagine that you can you make a wine in a cellar, and you, you it's impossible to imagine that you will win something in the cellar. All the things you can win are outside, in the vineyard. So the essential, uh, the most important part of my job is outside in the vineyard. So um, and uh, quickly when I arrived, uh, I, after no, I need I need three four years. I analyzed my, my potential. I, I realized that I was having a, a potential, and um, I realized that it was necessary to to have a, a bad relation with uh, with uh, with the soil and with the plant. 
uh, that why quickly I decided to stop here beside. My father was very respectful, but was using a little bit of the side just on those on those trees. Me, I decided to stop and uh, quickly, and 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 I and, and I have seen the evolution. It spent time, but you know. Um, in fact, the, the most difficult thing is to adapt yourself to each year. Each year is really different. So, uh, and um, and um, I'm very proud of my, my team uh, who work with me because uh, they are very reactive and we work really together. And uh, we try uh, we try to adapt the, our job to to the weather conditions of the year because the chief is the weather. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this is the most important uh, variation during, uh, during uh, between, between several vintages. And then now um, I, uh, I, have, um, I am organic and I have the certification. I was not organic at the beginning. It was not my goal. It was more a uh, road of life. Um, I, 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 I was walking and I walked to source and so I was not agree about my treatment. So. Uh, I tried to, to, to find the solution to work better. And, uh, and one day I realized that I was organic. So after speaking with friends like, uh, but you know, Pascaline Richard, uh, Leroy, with uh, uh, Maxime Mignon and other friends, uh, uh, I asked them, is it necessary to have a certification? And uh, they convinced me to have the certification. At the beginning, I was not happy to do a certification. I don't like the, or you say, the chapelle. Uh, I'm not a big fan about that, but but um, I, I realized that it was very important to, if you want to speak about what you are doing, you have to put. So so uh, so now uh, I am uh, I have I have the certification since uh, 2010, I think, and um, and uh, and it happened well. It's not written of the bottles. Sometimes it's written when uh, for some markets like in Denmark or in Germany because uh, importer are just um, organic shop, so he want to have, but normally it's not written of my bottle, but it's organic. Well, speaking of pro proving it, the proof is in the wine, and we do have one of the greatest wine tasters, most expert in the world with us, so I think maybe it would be good, a good time to start to thinking about tasting some of these wines, Laurel, well, that, you, that you have fashioned, and um, how about we start with um, the 2017 Saturn of Tupac, which is the, the current release. Um, I have and it. I, 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 happy coincidence. And I noticed that Pascaline has a glass and Arnaud has a glass. And I think maybe uh, between the three of you, 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 can, you can lead us, uh, lead us through this tasting experience. Pascaline? Yeah, yeah, I will with pleasure. Um, but uh, uh, maybe Laurent, um, do you mind um, talking a tiny bit about um, the, the different plots where you are located and where the, the Chateau Neuf is from, uh, as well as uh, um, maybe just the grape you are working with for some of uh, the from the attendees that may not. Before, yeah. uh, Before the tasting? Okay. Just, a um, bit, just to have a little bit of a context of. Uh, just, um, just to situate the estate, um, your, your, um, my estate is situated in the northwest limit of the Appalachian. Just behind me, you can see the hill, and the hill just behind me here is the north limit of the Appalachian. The vine just before in Côte d'Iron, on the side of the Um I have essentially um, clay and sandy soils with some um, roll, roll, roll stone on, on, on the top. Uh, uh, but it's really, uh, it's essentially sandy soil. It's more uh, um, sandy and, and, uh, and clay than limestone. Often we have an idea about Chateau Neuf Pape with uh, uh, limestone, clay, and uh, no. In my situation, it's more sand, clay, and sometimes lemon when you are on, on the bottom. Um, I have, I, I have, the essential part of my, my plot are face north. Except uh, um, three hectares face west, uh, but we will speak about this parcel, this plot later because it's uh, for the white uh, part used for the white, and uh, it's very important to be to be situated in the north north part of west part of the Appalachian. 
it's one one of the more fresh part of uh, this Appalachian Chef Energy Park. So uh, definitely, it helped me to have uh, freshness in the wines, and and uh, this is the reason why certainly I, I produce these wines, and um, and uh, and uh, I have made this choice. And uh, the variety is Chiffre Grenache. You have uh, in uh, in uh, 17, you are more than 80 percent Grenache. Yeah, after you have Syrah, Mouved, a little bit more than 5%, and Vaccares and Pinoise. Okay, They're essentially very old vines, between 100 years to, well, the youngest are, 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 are 10, 15, but uh, the most part is more than 50 years old. And um, I think it's important to mention that uh, your location and how Grenache is, is driving your wine as a kind of a base note, but done in, a, in an environment where you have been, I think, quite consistently being able to capture the aromatics and the expression of the Grenache from this part of, uh, of the Rhone, while always having been able also to handle very, very well the alcohol and the structure, which I think is a kind of a, a mark of your wine. Um, like, the, like the, for example, the 2017 that I, uh, I opened it last night, um, it's a 15% on the label. We know that vintages recently have been getting warmer and drier in this part of, mm -hmm. uh, of France. Um, I have to admit, I would have never guessed the alcohol being at such a level. Uh, and not only the alcohol, because you don't, you don't feel it in terms of just heat, but also you don't feel it in terms of the tannin. You know, sometimes when you really feel that you have warm vintage, very ripe sun vintage, you may have tannin that are angular, burnt, and also very powerful. And I'm very, very impressed in that 17, even more today than I was yesterday when I opened it, about how your tannin have an incredible vegetal freshness. You don't have any feeling of almost like licorice, burnt cocoa kind of style when you, you can have when you are using some stems that are very ripe. This is not the case at all. And I would have never guessed that, that amount of potential alcohol on, on, the, on the wine and showing so well, so young. So uh, do you mind, uh, because the whole cluster is something that is getting so trendy. So many people are talking about whole cluster, whole cluster, whole cluster. Um, do you mind maybe developing a, a tiny bit what that what that mean for you, whole cluster? Uh, uh, do you work the same way for all the varietals you mentioned? Is a whole cluster in Mourvedre is the same than a whole cluster in Grenache, for example? And uh, you know, do you do you crush a little bit the grape? What what is uh, you you know have no, I will answer that, but okay, no, no, um, I understand that, and um, it would be difficult to have a, a, an answer to for, for the reason why I have this freshness, because I have, I'm not sure to have find the, the, the reason, but about all cluster, um, one thing very important, um, and I speak just, not just for me, I speak to, for people who want to, to make, uh, to, don't to stop to this term, or, please, if you want to make whole cluster of wines, you have, uh, it's just one parameter. It's just possible if your wines are well, if uh, all outside is um, organized. It's, um, it would be very reductive to imagine that just uh, this term or this term will change definitively the things. But, but it has certainly, um, it helped certainly the wines to have a lot of freshness uh, because of the mineral salts, because of many things. Because uh, when you have the stems, you are obliged to be very careful in the, in, in the vats. You can't uh, make a lot of pigeage, delestage, you have to be careful. Uh, and you, you, are, you, 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 are, you are obliged to be very, very careful when you move the wine, when you, when you, when you crush the grapes and so forth. Uh, for the several varieties. In fact, I have the same process for all the varieties. Except Syrah, uh, which ferment apart alone, because normally, except uh, in all four, because it was a little bit more later than normally. 
uh, 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 all, all the, um, uh, I, I, I try to produce, uh, uh, to make a, a VAT, Grenache, Pouvet, Grenache, Vacares, Grenache, uh, uh, Cunois. It depends on the maturity of uh, each, each plot, each parcels, and each uh, varieties. Um, but the same process. The, 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 um, the different thing will be maybe, um, the, you know, each day I make a pump over. Uh, I, I pump the, the bottom, the liquid part, and I put on the solid part in the vats during fermentation. And sometimes I, I, I just make that five minutes, 10 minutes. It depends on the variety. It depends on the extractability of uh, the ability of the, of the, of the grapes to, to give tannins and aromas. Um, but I have no disclaimer. So it helped me. <laughs> I have no choice. Uh, I know my challenge. You know, when I prune, I know that I will not, I will not disturb. Yeah. When, yeah. when, when, when uh, uh, every year when I plowed, I know it. In all my process, I integrate this parameter. Okay. Absolutely. Is it is it one of the reason also? Um, this idea you, you mentioned with uh, your the treatment and going organic uh, because you knew also that during your vinification process, you, you are going to use way more than just a berry and you are also using the integrity of, is it something uh, that was also an influence or not at all into the evolution of the farming? Certainly. Uh, certainly. When I, uh, when, I, uh, when, when I realized that, when I start, I was not thinking about that. Mm. You know, I was uh, <laughs> not courageous when I start. I was just inconscient. <laughs> Today I'm more courageous. Because I know the risk, I know uh, I know all the the, the, the problem I can have uh, in the field or in the cellar. I do maybe the same thing, and and I'm more rigorous, but uh, but but I know the risk, so it's not the same. But um, yes, yes, I think uh, if you want to respect yourself and your consumer, if you want to make uh, all closer, you have to be organic. It's my opinion. Well. If, if I could interject just one thing, when listening to Laurent here, he is very modest about what he does. But whenever I think about doing whole cluster vinification, I kind of think about those auto, those car advertisements where you see the guy racing around the track and he spins around and he comes to a complete perfect stop. And then there's, there's a disclaimer at the end. This is a professional driver. Do not try this on your own. And I'm thinking about warning many winemakers about that when they talk about doing whole cluster fermentation. You have to do the work in the vineyard before you can get to that point. Yes, I have nothing to say after that. <laughs> I'm agree. But um, go on. Oh, uh, thanks, Maria. Um Going back to the, the alcohol content and the session of alcohol and the full, you know, not stemming, I remember you were saying that you feel like not stemming allows you and like decrease a little bit the alcohol content. How do you explain that? In fact, one of the things very important with the stems, it's like, um, how you say, a sponge, okay? Uh, it, it's uh, sometimes, um, it, it takes a little bit of alcohol. And uh, sometimes, normally, uh, with all cluster, you have a little, not a lot, but uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 less alcohols than, uh, than if you if, if you dist if you distill, because the stems pump a little bit of alcohol, but it's the same uh, with the acidity too. Okay, so um, that's why it's um, maybe disturbing because. Uh, you understand well the influence by uh, of the with the alcohol, but in the same time it's fresh, and in the same time I have lost a little bit of acidity too. So it's more complex than uh, we imagine, and I have not I have I haven't told the answer. I have this, uh, I, 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 I'm sure about the, the result uh, 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 because uh, um, you know. You know, when you taste uh, world cluster wines and well-made world cluster wines, you have always the same kind of sensation, more freshness, more drinkability, more, okay? So, but I don't know all the reason. I'm not sure I want to know then. 
Um, do you, uh, you, you say you have different uh, terroir for the grapes. Yes. Um, can you tell us which, what, how do you, how do you describe the texture and the aromatics you can get from each terroir and are the cluster uh, very different if they are grown more on, 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 on limestone or on sand? Do you see a, a massive difference that are not necessarily linked to the vegetal material? Um, definitively it's different. Uh, it's more elegant and, um, and uh, you have more finesse in, in sandy soil. It's not a legend. It's, it's clear. And uh, you have more structure and more tannins and sometimes more alcohol when you have more clay uh, and, and stones. Um, stones are friends and enemy too. Uh, they are very interesting, especially when you have a very fresh year, because it helps you to have a better maturity. But when you have a hot year, I, I'm not so happy about stone, okay? Because uh, you, you, when you have hot all around the day, you don't want during the night to have hot temperature. You want to have more cool temperature. Uh, the sand is uh, very interesting for that. But in one, in only condition is to have enough water on, in the, on the, in the undersoil uh, if you have clay. And uh, we are very lucky in the most part of uh, my operation in Chateau Club in general. We have under the soil a lot of water. It's not humid, it's a very dry area, but we have water under. And as long as we will have water, uh, we, we can produce very, very, we can continue to produce very incredible wines. And this is one of the secrets of the appellation, I think. And which part of, uh, how much do you have on sand and how much do you have on limestone for the limestone and, and pebbles? How much, roughly? How much, sorry? How much in terms of percentage? Percentage? Um, you know, it's complex. I have no soil pure limestone, no soil, I have some soil pure uh, sand, but um, in all my songs, I have uh, one third minimum of sand, and sometimes uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a majority. My majority is it's, it's, um, the shift, it's chiefly uh, sand. Uh, limestone, it's um, uh, it's uh, it's represent uh, four or five percent, not more. Okay. Not more, and uh, something important. Um, I prefer to put Grenache on sand. I prefer to put, uh, when I have stones and more, uh, more clay, I prefer to put more veg or sometimes Syrah. So, uh, um, uh, sand is very well adapted for Grenache. Mm -hmm. Better for Grenache than for more veg and Syrah, for my opinion. Are you, um, with the Grenache staying a dominant and with the uh, evolution we are, we are seeing over the last years of, um, of once again, climatic evolutions, mm -hmm. um, as you, and you are thinking Chateauneuf as a blend, is, you have the temptation to continue to explore kind of the old indigenous variety of the area. You are like, you have the Cunoise and the Vacares. Is it something that Ever cross your mind, or like you're like this, and I think that the patrimony of all vines, of having all vines well farmed, mm -hmm. is as important that maybe working with varietals that today reveal themselves uh, interesting. I think, uh, I, so I have two. So today I have decided many things. Uh, first thing, when I um, replant a, a tree dead in an old parcel, um, I, I try to plant something else on Grenache sometimes. I plant some move I plant some senso, I plant some vacares, you know, uh, because I think um, 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 it's, um, it's a good idea to, have, to add complexity. Uh, another thing, uh, it's, you know, the evolution of the temperature and uh, global warming, um, we can see the influence of that in the vineyard, we are sure about that. Um, it's not a problem for me for the whole parcels. Because the old parcels have known their evolution and they, um, they have adapted themselves to the situation. We have to just don't reach the limit. 
but uh, it's the problem uh, we have. Um, it's more a problem when you replant a new parcel, when you have young trees, when you plant a new plot. Um, I'm very careful with the uh, um, world stock. Very important because when we speak about when we talk about uh, uh, vines, we often speak about speak about the just a variety, but the rest stock is very very important, and uh, a very very funny things. When uh, um, I start, it was totally unfashioned to plant uh, to plant uh, with rust stock, uh, um, replace with the lodge because it was considered that an old fashioned uh, rust stock. And today, and that everybody tell our plant uh, um, uh, air sandies, uh, so it's a technical words, but uh, today they say again, plant repressed a lot because it's more uh, vigorous, yes. more, 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 more adapted to this, to this sort. And it was not, it's not a surprise that, uh, that my grandfather, my, my grand grandfather decided to plant with this, this uh, what sort. Um, and um, so uh, um, I think about, uh, so. Uh, that's why I have Cunois, that's why I have Vacares, Senso, I think about Senso, but I don't want to, to, to change uh, quickly the things. Um, and uh, I have not the sensation to, to be near the limit. I think we have an house uh, solution. Um, uh, be organic, plowing the soil, respect the leaves. Uh, you know, except when you have a very humid year. I can't understand why in the south of France you have to put away some leaves. It's not logical. Mm. Leaves are, are protected uh, as, a, as grapes from, 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 from the, the soil, okay? From the, um, the sun. So if we are careful about the job in the vineyard, we have an our solution today for I don't know for long, for how long, but to continue to have Grenache and, and, and in very good condition. Yeah. You are mentioning about the, that uh, pressure of uh, water, like it's something that you saw in 2018, right? That was a year uh, globally in the South that was <laughs> a lot humid. humid, humid. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm, I'm sure it was a challenging, but also something where you probably a vintage where you, when you learn a lot, having to also deal with that. Uh, and, and, and the mildew and things like that. Is it something that, for example, is mildew affecting the quality of the stem? Is it something that, or not at all, it's just having a, a, a take on the leaf and, and a berry and... Uh, it, 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 it can, it, it should, but it, it happened not like that. Um, you know, in 18, we have a very bad weather uh, a bad weather for the wine producer is uh, um, 30, 20 millimeters of water every two, three years, three days, sorry, during, uh, and we have this kind of weather between the end of April to the middle of June. And if you ask me, the 15th of June, my opinion about 15, mm, I was really afraid. And we was very, very affected by mildew. Um, it was too early to have rotten berries because it was just green uh, um, ber ber berries, so it was too early, but it was essentially mildew. Uh, we have to work a lot, but when I say a lot, it's really a lot. And when I say we, it's all, 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 the, all in my state. It's me first, of course, because I'm the chief, I have to, to be here. But um, it was uh, Jean-Patrick who worked um, with me. It's like a second uh, me, so he helped me a lot. And um, you, you, it's, maybe it's, it's, it seems to be, it's, it's crazy for you, but during, in, in one week, we spray three times. I never do that. Um, and uh, everybody has done uh, more. Fanny in, uh, in the office has, has done the double of work to, to let me more free to be in the, in the field and the vineyard. And we have very well worked. And, uh, and I was remember of um, this, um, about this situation, uh, this, this kind of situation happened earlier. And I remember what my grandfather was doing, what my father was doing, and what I was speaking about. And there was not plowing at this time. So we're not moving the soil because each time you move the soil, each time you, you, the, the humidity go, go, go out. 
and, and it increased the phenomenon. So, and, um, and after something very wonderful happened, the weather changed, and we have dry weather, a lot of wind like today, uh, mistral between the middle of June to uh, the middle of July, no rain. And, it's an, it, and, and, and it was announced to, to, to change totally the, the, the vintage. And uh, we have a, a, an incredible and beautiful rain uh, in, in the middle of August. And, um, and uh, we arrived to a very, very good result in the end. It was, you know, each time when I was picking the grape, I was surprised because I was having a little bit more than I was expected. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, each time I say, oh, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. A problem will arrive. It was so difficult before. It happened so well now. It's not possible. And it happened well. And uh, we have no troubles in the end. The balance is perfect in the wines. Um, we reach a, a, a very respectable level of alcohol. We have 14.6 in, in 18. No, no problem of maturity. Uh, the tannins are here. The color is here. All, 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 all the parameters are OK. And the balance in the wines is incredible. It's, I like a lot this vintage. It's, uh, it's uh, like a, a 14 with more richness, more depth. Yeah, and, and I recall, Laurent, when I visited you later that, that summer, you had told me in, in a, just a little over a two week span, you, you sprayed, I believe, eight times, and you used up your entire copper allocation for, for the year under the organic uh, requirements. Um, you were spraying on Saturdays and on Sundays. Yeah. Um, and what? Is it okay to hear me? Um, and yeah, I think you told me that in the final analysis, what percentage of your crop did you actually, you only lost about, I can't remember, it was like 10% to mildew. Sorry, I have not, I have not, I have not I have a problem with the noise. I have noise and I have not understand. At the, in the final, at yes. The, after all of the work you did, you only lost a very small percentage of your crop in 2018. Isn't that true? In the, yes. In the end, I arrived to uh, around 25 hectoliters of Chateau Neuf du Pape. And uh, the maximum is 35, but for my estate, the maximum is 30. It's, uh, except in 19, we have 30 point, 32 hectoliters, and that's why it's uh, well, wonderful. But uh, when I have 30, I'm very, very, very happy. And, uh, and um, it was a surprise for me. And uh, in Cote d'Iron, we arrived at 30. And, um, and the, 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 um, I, I, you know, I, don't, I have not really realized that. I have a control for the organic uh, control uh, company. And they control me. And uh, just before the harvest, and in the end, uh, they take the, the, the pencil, they write, and they say, Okay, uh, you can do the total production of the appellation. I say, oh, what do you mean? You can you, I, I, I have seen your parcel, maybe you are 35 hectoliters. I say, no, 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 it's not possible. And, and in fact, uh, she has not uh, seen all the parcels, but in some parcels, she was surprised and she was surprised and proud. She was surprised because she had seen that uh, we have a, a good production, but proud to see that uh, when you're organic, it's possible, even if it's very, very, very difficult here at the beginning, because of June and July, uh, July and August, I have made no treatment in August and just one in, in July, but it's possible to do that. Because in, in, the, in, the, in the fields and everywhere, um, and not just in my Appalachian, in all the Appalachian, uh, some people start to say, okay, if you have problem with mildew, it's because uh, the organic guy. They are not do well the treatment. They don't just use copper sulfate. They don't use. Uh, they don't use a systemic products. So that's why they have mildew. Uh, no, no, no. And uh, we have a discussion like that in Chateau Neuf du Pape. And uh, I, 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 I say stop. We stop this discussion. Uh, come with me. We see the parcel. And uh, when it's difficult, it's difficult for everybody. It's not because you're organic or biodynamic or I don't know what that you have more problems than the others. When you are organic, when you are biodynamic guy, when you are, you have to know to do very maybe to do very well the job and maybe more than the others because you have no security, okay? But it's possible, and 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 uh, 
and it was uh, for me a very important thing and um, and uh, uh, but it was not the first year remember all two in all two we have uh, an incredible storm five uh, 580 millimeters of water the 9th of september and uh, we arrived to produce something and very good because i have tasted recently this one and it was a big surprise for me but not a lot but it's possible and you know i speak again with uh, about uh, guy julien from bogravia he always tell me the terroir parle the terroir speak after one year two years the terroir speak even if it's difficult you're not alone you know the soil on the soil the plant all is here if you capture the terroir yeah they have conscience of terroir um, you um, you just told us that uh, you did the blending for the 18, right? Yes, yesterday morning. <laughs> yes. Yesterday morning, uh, we start at six and we finish at uh, ten. <laughs> can you um, so can you uh, tell us why you are blending like that so late? Because there is different approach with blending. You, so you are telling us at the beginning you, you may ferment Grenache with Crinoise or Grenache with Vacares. Hmm. Uh, is it because of just practical size of vat or things like that? With uh, uh, and then, that, my, and then you that, blend also. All yes. this parameter, my my captain, all this parameter. But in fact, so I make, I I, I do co-fermentation. So I have often a pure a pure syrah and a Grenache uh, Mauvais, Grenache Vacarès, Grenache Crinoise. In the end of them, the alcoholic fermentation and malolactic, if all happen well and normally it happen well. Very important thing, we can speak about that. We just use indigenous yeast and we had no ferment for, for malolactic. Uh, it happened alone mm -hmm. and well. Um, um, I, 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 I have in the end between two, two or three vats. This year I was having three vats of 90, in, in um, 18, 90 hectoliters. Um, I have racked this uh, three vats in uh, July last year, mm -hmm. and I put each vat in 90 hectoliters vat. I have not blended these vats because I want to go, I want to see the evolution of each vat. In fact, if, if, uh, if this vat is, is uh, if I have decided to pick the grape at the same time, it's because I was considering that it was having. Um, special combination uh, the same uh, level of maturity and it was interesting to have these grapes them together okay so i want to see this evolution um during two winter okay and after i make a final blending uh just one month after the bot before the bottling one month because more uh, um, earlier each time you move a wine, you change the wine. So one month is not enough to change the wines. So I have just one blending and I'm proud about that and I want to do that. So I want to have the same wine. And uh, one month because uh, after one month, um, you have a, a, a very good combination of, uh, in this blending. You, are, you, are, you have integrated uh, the, the oxygen, uh, uh, you have good amenization of gas, carbonic gas and all this, this thing. That's why one month before the bottling. I will bottle the, uh, in, uh, in the 20th of June, I don't know exactly the day. Uh, uh, um, a fruit day. <laughs> you think having the two winters is uh, important for... Uh, yes, for, your for the sedimentation. For, for the sedimentation is very important and for uh, the stabilization of the wine, you know. Uh, I, I'm not doing fining, I'm not filtering the wine, so uh, I'm not filtering the wine, so it's very important to let time to, 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 to the wines. And, uh, okay, we, we, we produce Chateau Neuf du Pape. Uh, it's not necessary to drink it uh, in summer, okay? So uh, I bottle it in June. I let it in my cellar quite uh, during uh, three months normally, except when we start to export to Peter because it takes time to write in, in USA. And uh, I start to really to sell my wines in November. Yeah. And how do you uh, apply your fields of food to your other cuvées? Because you are producing Chateauneuf, but you're also doing some Côte du Rhône and you yeah. also have the Vincent Pays de Vaucluse. So the, 
um, how do you, let's say, if you want to try something one day, who knows? Are you, are you using the other QV also to, to, to work a little bit differently or are you doing everything exactly the same? Wow, <laughs> you all you're all understand exactly what I have done with the Vendée PI. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Vendée Vend Pays Vend uh, à côté is a, is a, it's a, it's a, it's a Peter and my baby. Because in fact, uh, uh, it has a special story. Um, I respect a lot my appellation and, um, and Cote Giron too. It's difficult for me to make experience with, uh, with this appellation because I have the sensation to be too small for that. Okay, sensation is, the appellation is so important for me. So um, I, was, uh, I, I want to try another variety. I want to try to taste myself. I want to, trace, to taste uh, the, the, my process. So I decide to a new variety. So I use it in, 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 in Vendée That's why I, I, I have used Merlot. I'm not, a, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Merlot. But it's interesting to have something different, and um, and I was having a parcel interesting for that with different salts near the Cotiron, but not the same kind of salts, more lemon, uh, more lemon, lemon. You say it's lemon, little lemon, okay, correct? The lemon. word, yeah, lemon, lemon. lemon. Um, um, so it was interesting to have this variety, and uh, and um, and uh, I decided to make this experience with Van Pay, but. I make experience, but I have the same respect for the plant, for the wine, for everything. Okay, uh, it's the same kind of process, you know. And sometimes, not in all the in all the condition, but you have more work in a vendée pays and in a Côte de Rome, in the field than for Chateau Neuf du Pape. Because if Chateau Neuf du Pape, Chateau Neuf du Pape, it's because the, the condition of the grape condition are more easy, more easy, more adapted to high quality wines. And to have a good quality in a Venepe in Côte d'Ivoire, sometimes it's more difficult to do that. And I, that's why I respect a lot all the Appalachian and all the producer. I'm lucky to be, I'm not especially believe in luck or unluck, but I'm very happy to, and, and, and lucky to, to, to be born near Chateau Pap and have Chateau Nagy Pap pass all, because it helped me a lot. And, uh, but, 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 but uh, okay. Um, um, but, but if I have experience to do, I do it with uh, Van de Pays, of course. And uh, one time I have tried filtration. I tried for ooh, uh, a small quantity in, for, in a Côte not in Chateau neuf de Pas, you know, just to see if it's, uh, it makes a difference. So, um, but, you know, um, I'm still continue to make experience. I have uh, this year, uh, I have planted um, a new variety in Van de Pays. Um, Resistance against mildew and, and odium. I want to try small, small parcel, 0 0.20 hectares, not a big parcel, but just to try. And I have uh, find something very special. I don't know where I will plant it because uh, I think uh, it's not allowed to do, but uh, nobody here. Uh, it's a white mauvais. I have found uh, white mauvais. And um, I'm doing, um, you know, I'm doing select, massal selection, and uh, I have selected uh, for in two years to have some uh, pink claret, some blue blank, and some white claret. And uh, I have found, and we have found uh, white uh, mauvais, and uh, we graft this mauvais this year. I have the authorization to graft it, as I give me uh, uh, 200 uh, little uh, butts, okay. Uh, and uh, we graft it, it, and I will certainly plant next year, but I don't know where. Is, is that in Appalachian, Appalachian um, Chateauneuf or Côte d'Iron? Um, um, Mouvred um, is allowed in Chateauneuf du Pape in Côte d'Iron. It's not your, the answer you, you expect, but it's my answer. How did you find it? Uh, because uh, so during the um, when um, when I was doing the the, the, the muscle selection, I was speaking with a, a good friend of mine who, is, uh, who has a big passion about that, and he tell me, you know what? I'm sure we have find it. Uh, it's not me. It's he, he has find it, and uh, we speak about that. And uh, I say, but if you find it, you we, we have to plant it. Yes, but we don't know the result. I mean, 
it's not mm -hmm. very important to know the result. We will see the result after. It's, uh, you know, it's like, um, how can I say that? Um, um, I had the sensation to have discovered uh, something. It's not me, but, uh, and uh, I say me, I want to try. I want to try. And, uh, and, I, uh, and if it has the same characteristic of more red, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's answer to your question for the red earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, more late, less alcohol. Uh, it should be interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're so going to have, have to wait. We're going to have to wait. I have to wait. I have to wait. But it's a great experience. I'm very happy about that. Um, to come back to the to the blend of the 18 uh, and uh, the 17, um, in your whole world, how would you describe these two vintages for you uh, are aromatically at that stage right now? Like, of course, yes, 17. 18. 18. I have to take it. <laughs> Me, I have it. <laughs> Directly from the vat. Now, in fact, you have um, you have a lot of fruits and a lot of freshness. It's not a surprise because uh, so yeah, it's more fresh, but uh, um, it's more fresh than, than 17, of course. It's not because uh, 17 is not an old fresh, it's because it's more the characteristic of the 18. You have a lot of fruit and um, it's very, um, it's very, so the, the aromas are very easy to catch, okay? Uh, it's, you have no, no over maturity, no, nothing like that. And, um, and the big surprise I, I, I had after the blending when I tasted it, but I, but I was thinking about that. I have more depth, more profundity, more, more depth, more density than I was imagining before. Okay. And it's often like that when you make the blending. You have three vats, three good wines, maybe one better, and often one really better. And each time you say, oh, this one is better, why I had the order in this, in this one? You take taste the three wines separately. You make your classification. Okay, I prefer this one, this one, this one. You blend the wines, and the blending is better than the three wines. And this is this is the magic of uh, the blending. Mm. And um, and it's what happened with uh, the 18s. Uh, it's uh, in fact uh, the, the the complexity, the density is better when we are after the blending than before. Mm -hmm. Very effective. Excuse me, Laurent, when did you harvest your 18? About what date? Oh, we start the 5th of September and we finish the 7th of October. Uh, uh, I was not thinking that it was possible. Uh, it was the first time and uh, we have quite the same pro process in 19. Uh, I don't know if, it's, if uh, it came from um, from um, the evolution of the temperature. Maybe it can have um, uh, an influence. And uh, because you know, you have, we, have, we had frost in, nine, in 2000. So we have a, a big variation of um, growing at this time. In 17, in, uh, in 17, it was not like that, it was more short. But in 19, we spent um, around one month. And in 18, the same. In fact, um, you have a big difference with, uh, with uh, parcel who start very early and, uh, and the parcel who start more later. And, um, and when you have a uh, humid year, uh, no, it's, not, it's logical to have this, uh, this difference in the end because okay, when you have hot temperature, normally you have more, um, it's, uh, you have more, um, a better homogenization of the maturity, except in 19, for example. And in 19, you, we continue to have this difference in the end. And, um, I think maybe more it will start earlier. More we are at risk to have fresh temperature, more we are at risk to have, uh, uh, and, and more variation we can have about um, the maturity. And maybe the, the, the average we spend more longer than, than 10 years ago. 10 years ago, in two weeks, three weeks, it was maximum it was finished. Okay, now, or maybe I take more risk, two, maybe two, but. Uh, no, I think um, it's, um, it's an evolution uh, since uh, three, four years. And so for 17, the harvests were more compact? How was this? Yes, um, for a very simple reason. We have a very, very, very bad flowering. We produce uh, less than 20 hectoliters of Côte du Rhône and Chateau Neuf du Pape and maybe 30 hectoliters of Benepay per hectare. 
uh, and uh, the weather condition was very very hot and um, and uh, if it was um, in dry and if you, if we had not um, such a small production we will have problem with dryness but uh, the plant was having such a little quantity of grapes uh, the the fresh weather um, the hot weather and the dryness has not affected the, the vines mm. and the vines was announced was having announced leaves and announced reserve to to grow to to feed the the, the, the berries and we are, we start the harvest uh, in august for the first time of my life we start uh, the 20th of august and we finish uh, the 15th of september mm. you have a, a lot of spiciness in the 17 right now showing at least here. The fruit is a here lot of? of spice. Yeah. Like a lot of uh, black pepper, really fresh cracked, so pink peppercorn, um, licorice. A lot of also that family of anise, anise seed, and yeah. licorice really striking. After you have the fruit and after you have all that, but there is really that. It was quite, uh, quite, uh, quite impressive yesterday and even today. Once again, after 20, like almost 24 hours of being open even as much i it's a uh, it's something I, the fruit doesn't taste or smell cooked whatsoever it's almost mm -hmm. kind of subdued right now it's in a phase of being subdued compared to that really intense and 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 varied spiciness i'm tasting is it something that you are noticing too or is it something that yes yes and um, it's always a surprise for me because uh, I like everybody um, when I, I, I see the weather. So when you have hot, very hot condition, you expect hot, you, you expect more hot wines. And it's always, even today, even for me, it's always a surprise to see that uh, uh, we have more freshness than expected uh, and so on. But in, 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 in the end, it's not so difficult, right? That it's result, but it just happen alone outside, okay? Um, and it's uh, it's one of the characteristic of my situation of my estate, and uh, um, and I respect that. So um, Peter can maybe confirm that, but uh, and you because uh, and Arnaud too because you have tasted uh, for a long time. Uh, you, you, you taste my wine for a long time, but when the, the years are very hot, we have more freshness than expected, and while the the year are more deviated, more difficult, we have more richness unexpected and um, it's something um, in fact I have the sensation that my my plus compense the variation of the years and uh, my respect about the plant and the soil help that and to that. Well, yeah, yes I mean the, the vintages 2007 and 2009 and 2011 are all proof of what Laurent is saying his wines you can you have the opportunity to taste 2007. Many Chardonnays from that vintage are not holding up so well, but Laurent are still are still fresh, beautiful. Well, yeah, even the 2003. I remember, you know, the dinner we had like a few years ago. I was saying at the 03. I was I, I was shocked, like the freshness, and it was almost Burgundian, uh, but despite the alcohol, but it was so elegant at the same time. So yeah, that's the. That's the ultimate proof in that uh, in such a vintage. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, this is a special night for me because it was quite impossible to imagine to spend such a, a time like that in uh, in New York. And uh, I remember about a young boy uh, when I was 21, and I will never imagine that I will do such a tasting uh, like that. And thank you to have organized that, uh, Peter and you. Um, Yes, and, and, and with uh, all three, I have very, very funny story. Uh, I remember um, um, a sommelier teacher arrived with, with all um, his students. And uh, he, he, he came in my state, uh, we stay, we taste many, many, a lot of wines, a lot of Chateau Neuf du Pape. And in the end, I open, uh, I open a blending, I open a blending bottle. And uh, I remember, he tastes the wine to say, okay, it's fresh, elegant. The first thing we can say is not all free, and it was all free. <laughs> but um, congratulations! Uh, but you're you you're, you're nice maybe to say that all free is Burgundian. Uh, no, no, it's uh, Grenache. <laughs> it, it was 
It was it was really good, but at the same time very elegant. It was ripe, but very elegant, almost a little bit like Raya's esque, you know, in terms of like a texture and flavor profile. Uh, so that that was that was really good. You know, when in the past, uh, Frederic Mistral, the, the the Provencal writer, um, of uh, you know, was speaking about uh, Chateau du Pape, and uh, uh, one more than one hundred years ago, he was speaking about finesse and elegance of Chateau du Pape. We was not speaking about power and richness of Chateau du Pape. You, you, when when you say it's a very old um, advertisement for 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 the the negotiant, they always say negotiant on vain thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody say negotiant in strong wines. <laughs> very good point. What is it's your oldest? What is your oldest uh, Grenache from the region you tasted? How old was it? What is? Do you have a lot of experience of very old? Uh, yes. Uh, no. No a lot. No. But uh, uh, sixty-nine. I am because I am so I I am born in sixty-nine. So and um, and I have the opportunity to taste uh, uh, three or four Chateau du Pape sixty-nine, and there was. Uh, the most part was just incredible. I remember about a wonderful um, Clos Montolivet, 69, mm -hmm. unbelievable, and uh, very elegant and uh, so fragile. So um, uh, it was uh, Domaine saint Cifre, 69. Um, it was just wonderful. And I have the opportunity to, to taste, uh, to taste um, 81, 78, and uh, I, I think I have taste one older, but uh, you know I have no. My my father has not never kept bottles. Mm -hmm. The only old bottles I have, I have some seventy two, uh, seventy three, because my my brother is born in seventy two. So when I was fourteen, I have stole the bottles. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I put the bottles in my on, 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 under my shirt and my, my and I have some. I have six. 12 bottles between 70 to, 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 to 80. It was from training practices. You are just practicing. That's for you. Um, but, but you know, um, there, is a, there are some reason why there are, there are, there are not a lot of uh, very old uh, Grenache at Unity Park. Um, in the past, the most part of the wine was sold in bulk, not in bottles. And uh, um, a reason why Chateau Neuf du Pape is uh, a technical reason why Chateau Neuf du Pape is so popular, is more popular today than, than 40, 50 years ago, is the evolution of the cooling system, uh, the control of the temperature in the cellar, and uh, it's quite impossible to keep to, to, to keep the wines uh, in the south of France without uh, humidity uh, and, 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 and freshness, and so we need to in, in the cooling system. So um, when you want to be very careful with SO2, with, uh, uh, with the evolution of the wines, and uh, you have to, to control the temperature. And uh, uh, um, it helps a lot. Uh, it helps us a lot, really. Well, while we're on tasting and discussing the 2017, I have a, a question for Arnaud um, from, a, from a viewer. Uh, they ask your advice, Arno. Uh, what you recommend to to have with the 2017 Chateau Neuf du Pape? It's been a little while. I think I tasted with you, Laurent, last summer. So it's been a little while, and it was even more primary, I would say, than it's probably now. Uh, but you know, like like I would say, like any young Chateau Neuf, you need something to. Uh, to hold up to the, you know, like uh, to first the alcohol content as well, but the the, the freeness of, of the wine and everything. So honestly, I would just go with something like, you know, very simple or with some like green meat, uh, green vegetables, you know, um, don't try too much because again, it's like such, uh, you know, like young, wi young wine, but like uh, also like a kind of like primary and, and again with some a little bit of alcohol. So yeah, we probably would go with like a green meat and like green vegetables, something easy, you know, no no spices, no anything. But probably Laurent is more, <laughs> can, we, can we say a little bit more uh, about that for the for the pairing? But yeah, that, that would be my, you know, my, my easy, easy way to go. 
Now I see that uh, Ascaline, you have a white wine in your glass. Laurent, you do too. Tell us about that. Oh la la. Um, that's so. It's 2018 White Chateau Neuf uh, from from Laurent. Um, it's just awesome. <laughs> it's just so good. So I, you know, I think um, white from this part of of France once again are not necessarily the wines that people are are craving for spontaneously unless you really uh, have an experience. And it's and I think it's a, it's a little bit of an issue uh, because there is a, a certain misrepresentation of what wine from the southern Rhone can be uh, when they are done with the right varietal and vinified with the right way, literally what you are talking about. Uh, they are, can be some of the most complex wine in the world. And right now this 18 is showing so great, so young. So I would like uh, to tell us, you to tell us a bit how you are making that. It's Claret, which it's a grape I really, I really like. It's a, it's a grape I've been focusing more over the last, I would say, three, four years, especially in the aging potential of Claret, Claret and Bourboulin uh, being two grapes that I am fascinated by uh, in terms of their ability to, to handle a certain level of alcohol and a certain weight, a certain unctuosity, yet able also to be extraordinarily fresh. But the freshness is not necessarily expressed by the acidity. The freshness comes from something else. And they, they, they are wines that I think, and Arnaud can also, because we, Arnaud has been a fan of Southern white uh, from this part of France since a while. They are whites that are never what the guest is necessarily asking about or asking us, but when you start and when you put them the right bottle in front of them, it's a, it's a game changer because once again, when it's done well, young, it's delicious. And that 18 is fragrant. It's, there is this, beautiful floral aspect without any heaviness. It's pure white peach. It's textural, it's unctuous, but it's not heavy. There is no feeling of alcohol whatsoever in the back. You have a tiny bit of phenolic in It's really fantastic, but as well, it's going to be tremendous in five or 10 years because clients it very, very well. So uh, I have to say opening that last night, same thing opened last night. I was like, wow, that's an awesome bottle of wine from also vintage that people are considering very, very tricky. So maybe talking, uh, that's the first, I, I'm very, very impressed by this white. Um, so maybe talking about white, this Claret Rose, right? Mm -hmm. Claret Rose and Bourboulinque. Uh, why, why, uh, why is this, what is your relationship to this grape? Why is this grape? Because it was not something, you, you bought that, you bought that plot, right? Also. Um, and uh, and yeah, and, and congrats. That's a really beautiful book. Right. I remember how excited Laurent was when he got that plot of Sarah's Rose. <laughs> oh, well, so um, first thing, um, thank you very much for the time because I know um, um, when you speak about white wines, I know what, uh, what you, I know that you know really what you say and uh, I know um, uh, where you come from and the wine you like, so I'm very, uh, so <laughs> but it's difficult for me to hear such a compliment. So thank you very much. Um, okay, Peter know me well, and uh, I have certainly told to him more than ten times than, than uh, that I will never produce white Chateau Le Duc. And I was sure about that, but the definitively sure, except something appear. Um, not except, but something appear and, and it changed my, 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 my ID. In fact, I have an incredible opportunity in, uh, in 2016, in, in, in May. Um, in fact, uh, I changed a parcel with, uh, with someone and uh, for several reasons, it's too long to explain tonight, but it's really a big story. And in this parcel, it was a, a very um, steep slope, face west, uh, with storms, with sand, very hard to work. And this is, this is, it was a re one of the reasons why the other producer wanted to, to change this parcel. And me, I was having the parcel near this one, and I was the, the material to, to work, and I was knowing how to work. So, And in, in this parcel, I find pink claret. And pink claret 
it's so special. It's different. It's a claret, but uh, it's, it's one of the most marvelous uh, variety you can see. It's like, oh, it's not, not it's just beautiful, incredible. Uh, when you have the sun behind, behind the, 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 the berry and you see this, uh, uh, this color, the rose, but you have, uh, um, you can see the seeds inside. It's, it's so special. And I did decide in, uh, in August when the, the, the berries turn. And when I have seen that, I decided to, to try to produce a white. Um, the guy from, from, from the laboratory, when I said to him, I will produce a white with pink red, I said, oh, okay, we lose you. Uh, <laughs> you're definitely crazy. You know, I know you, you don't want to, to, do, uh, to make decoloration in the end. You will have a, a pink, a pink color and uh, it will not happen. I say, we will try. And uh, uh, and we we harvest uh, that the last day of the harvest, okay, in 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 in, in, uh, in sixteen, in seventeen two, in the eighteen it was the seventh of October, okay, and um, and I remember this day because um, so to, you know we we, we just go uh, we, it was not possible to do that uh, in the evening because it's white we I prefer to pick on morning and dress quickly. And I say to my team, okay, uh, um, we will pick the, the pink red uh, tomorrow. If someone doesn't want to come, because we have not a long time to pick, maybe one hour, two hours, uh, you're not obliged to come. And everybody wants to come because they have seen the berries. They have seen these grapes and they were so beautiful that everybody wants to come. And the, on, the, the, on this uh, very, very difficult slab, and with the worst on, and everybody come. And, and it happened very well. And uh, um, and uh, and uh, and I have uh, rediscovered something, uh, and I have um, maybe maybe it helped me to understand why my red was fresh too, because as you say, it was, it's not the acidity, it's not the pH. We have a, not a very good pH for white. Uh, as the alcohol, it's it's around thirteen. It's, uh, it's a very good thing because uh, pink, um, pink red and, and bobolink are not doing a very, very high level of alcohol. So we can, you can, we can reach the, the perfect maturity without having a, 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 a too high level of alcohol. So, and it happened well. And uh, I, I try to don't uh, move too much the wine. I, I try to be very careful. I controlled the temperature for the fermentation. The alcoholic fermentation happened very well. And so on. Um, so uh, I fall in love with uh, pink red. That's all. Laurent, I would, I would say just like as Pascal said, I think your 18 was, I mean, first it's really amazing, like really so fresh. And But did you ask, I mean, because obviously making white is quite different from making red. Did you ask for any guidance from, from your friends, like uh, from Richard Loire, for example, and everything? Or do you say, okay, I just go, I just do whatever I feel and we'll see the, the results? So, my first uh, reflex was to ask to my neighbors, first thing. And uh, I remember one of, of this guy. I asked him and he said, uh, so, to make a white, you have to use, um, uh, or you say enzyme, you have to do that, to do that, to do that. I say, stop! Stop! No, it's not possible. It's not what I want to do. So I ask her to, to, to two wonderful women, uh, I respect them a lot. It's uh, the, the sister Harmony, Domaine Marco. And they ask, I asked them all they were doing and they gave me their opinion and I was more open, <laughs> really more open. And uh, yes, of course, I have asked uh, essentially to two guys, Richard, of course, because Richard is a good friend of mine, and uh, and um, and uh, he was certainly one of the reasons why I don't want uh, I, I don't want to produce uh, I don't want to produce a white because when you have drank uh, Richard Loire wines, white wines, uh, it's difficult to imagine doing something like that. And, uh, and to other guy, uh, one of the best um, white uh, Corbia possible to find is uh, Maxime Magnon, uh, another friend of mine. And uh, both, um, uh, both helped me to, to take decision and, uh, and, um, and I have heard 
what, what they say. And of course, I have, un, uh, I have uh, also uh, listened to uh, Mar uh, Domaine Marco, uh, the sister Armenia, because so we have the same kind of uh, soul and weather, so it helped me a lot. I have taken this decision to bottle not too late earlier because it's a small, small um, uh, continent. I produce uh, less than five hectoliters in, 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 in 80. So you do roughly what, 1,000 bottles? So do you get a white wine bag? Do you want to get more um, vineyard? Like, and do you want to increase, I maybe mean, beside the wine Morvedre? Or you go like this? I don't know. I don't know. A good thing for Peter, if the market uh, is more easy in, in some times. I have 10 hectoliters of white in, in 19. <laughs> okay, the double. So, uh, uh, I don't forget message. these things, Laurent. <laughs> it was a special, special message. Um, um, yes, I have. That's why I, I'm doing the, the master selection. Uh, I, I, I want, I have uh, the opportunity to find a, a parcel uh, without vines in Chateau Neuf du Pape, uh, near my estate with the same kind of soils. And, uh, and I, uh, I decided to replant with uh, Roussan and Bobolink and Claret. Uh, no, no, Roussan. Um, pink, uh, pink Claret, white Claret, and, and, and uh, Bobolink. No, Roussan. I don't want. You know, you have a lot of very good wine of Roussan and Chateau Neuf du Pape. Uh, it's not necessary to, to do the same thing. And, um, um, uh, and I will certainly plant some of it. But it's a secret. So Laurent, the varieties are Claret Rose and Bordelanc. About what percent is Claret Rose? Uh, so Claret Rose represents, uh, in, 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 um, in 18, it represents uh, 95%. Uh, because uh, where, um, uh, Bordelanc was most affected by, 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 by the mildew. We are just 5%. Uh, in uh, in the other vintages, 16, 17, and, and, and 19, it's more 90, 10. 90, 10, yes. And, Thank, um, you. Thank you. But, uh, but, but I want to add some white, um, uh, white claret too. Uh, because, so, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, so it's always a limit with the color. We have to be careful to not have a red color or pink red, a pink color in, in the white. So, I had, uh, it's very important for me to add some white uh, claret to Bobolink and not just pink claret. And can you use 100% claret and still be in the appellation or is there like a yes. Yeah, it's okay. possible. It's possible, but it's not possible to write it. Oh, okay. okay, because you know, Chateau Neuf du Pape, it's wonderful for that. You are allowed to make the blending you want. You're not obliged to respect, like, it's a pity, for the, it's a problem for the Côte d'Iron. I'm very disappointed about that. And normally in Côte d'Iron, you're obliged to have a minimum 20 or 25 percent Syrah, more red, even if so, if you have salt, it's not an adapted situation for this variety. So, the Chateau Neuf du Pape have made the, the choice to don't, um, to don't, um, to don't make a special uh, regulation for, for, for the quantity of uh, variety. Uh, that's why you have uh, some, some, some estate use uh, more more red, some uh, like uh, Claude Pape or Bocastel, or, or some estate more Grenache uh, and Chiffre Grenache like, uh, like we do, uh, some more Syrah, some, and in the white you have pure Roussan. And uh, Bocastel, I think it's pure Roussan, or they have in Puvé a uh, pure Mauvais sure. And uh, other production like uh, Domaine de Jaume, uh, they have pure Roussan too. Uh, and uh, some estate uh, use, um, um, you know, we will, you, you will find more, uh, and people will speak, will speak about more about uh, Claret and Bobolink now. In the past, it was considered like a, a second level variety, you know. Uh, you will be surprised not only by about the quantity of uh, bobolink and claret you have in the wine. Do you think it's because of the climate change or just the people's perception? And no, uh, no, 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 not just that. You know, you you have known this period. Um, uh, of um, over maturity, over richness, uh, um, um, uh, and uh, it was necessary to to have the most uh, the most important quantity of alcohol possible to to, 
to prove that you you want uh, uh, wine better than your neighbors. Um, uh, um, uh, in fact, Roussan's aromas of Roussan are very understandable. Um, uh, um, Grenache gave a lot of alcohol, but that's why they were more, more popular. And um, but uh, it, it was the same in the cooking uh, in, during a period in, in France and certainly in the US. Um, um, the people propose uh, more heavy uh, food. Uh, with Ian. The hammerchum was uh, not well welcome. Uh, the acidity, not always. Today, sometimes it's the opposite. Okay, it has changed. Mm -hmm. And um, um, okay, it's a good evolution. Is there a big difference between uh, claret uh, rose and claret blanche in terms of uh, structure and aromatics, or is it just more a question of color? To, to be to be honest, uh, I'm not a good uh, guy to say that because I have essentially uh, been claret, and I have never really fermented alone uh, white claret. But it's uh, I think I find more salinity in pink claret, more 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 more. more I think it's less um, uh, varietal uh, aromas. It's more, I think it's more, for me, more interesting. But it's in my situation. And what is the soil on the, um, where you grow the clay at rose? Uh, it's um, essentially sand, a lot of sand. And uh, you have, um, in fact, you have a big variation in, in, in this law. You have, uh, sometimes you have galley, sometimes you have uh, sand and it, and you know, it's not so, normally in, in, in our soils, so the top is more galley and the bottom more, more sandy. And in this situation, you have sun, galley, sun, galley. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see uh, the, the, when, you, when you see on the other side, uh, you can see the, the, the variation of the soil. It's very, very special. In the Loire, in which layer D are, are the Arab roads? Le lieu D, it's a, the most part of my parcels, my plants are situated in this, this, this lieu D, it's a Cabrière Nord. Okay, it's the northwest part of the Appalachian. Uh, it's, uh, it's between the northwest limit and the castor of Mont And the big, the big plate of uh, Mont -Rodon. That's why we have face, love face north and face west. It's a great way to, uh, to, uh, to drink now, but once again, I, I can't wait to see this wine in 10 years, you know? Um, uh, um, uh, uh, for the moment, I don't know, I hope. And I, I, think, so, I think so too, but, but I have to wait before, before the answer. It's my little experience with 100% all vine claret, uh, a 10 all vine well farm. Years. The we'll sauce see. is even more prominent, you know? Uh, it's Laurent, possibly what is the age of these of this parcel of, of these lines? Uh, this parcel is one year more older than me. <laughs> so they're they're, they're young. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fifty-two. Fifty-two years old. Fifty-two years old. It was complanted. It was uh, a part is in uh, Bob, um, pink red. You have Syrah and you have Grenache. It's, um, but uh, in, in fact, in this parcel is um, separate. No, it's not separate. You have just one parcel, but you have a part in pure in Grenache and part in red, part pink red. I don't know the reason why why they have planted pink red, why they have planted Syrah. So but, I was I was going to ask you: Is that common to have that? Or, I mean, like that old pink red, or like in in the fifties, like the few white chateau du Pape were more Roussan uh, than claret or Bourboulin, or you know, in in the evolution of the um, of uh, uh, of the appellation chateau du Pape, you are always um, in each moment you are fashion uh, variation of density, the plantation density, uh, uh, varieties. Some varieties are more popular or less. And um, if you if you look at the um, uh, at uh, the proportion of the variety uh, 60 years ago or 70 years ago, you will have uh, less Grenache. Um, and um, and um, in, during this period, um, people replant uh, Vaccarès, some Cunois, and and some Pink Red. Uh, to to balance uh, the Grenache, 
after uh, people forget that and uh, they plant more senso because it's more regular production, sure, certainly, and uh, more Syrah, more Grenache, and more Mouvet. Now, uh, with the global warming, with uh, um, with the evolution of the market too, and, and, and the taste too, uh, more and more um, people are thinking about other varieties, and uh, uh, we you 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 find more. New plantation of uh, red maybe, but claret, bobolink, uh, uh, quinoise, uh, quinoise and baccarat are very very popular at this time. We will see. We will see. Okay. Well, I I think that we we've, we've worked. In... I'm sorry, my my. I have a dog. We hear that. I have a plane and a dog. You you see, there is a plane. So <laughs> Peter. Peter. I can't hear. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I think we've worked in um, questions from viewers, but if your viewers have any more, I think now is a good time to send them. Um, and I just wanted to thank especially Ascaline and Arnaud for joining us, lending their, their expertise and all of their good questions. Um, and of course, Laurent, for all of your time and, uh, and just uh, incredible knowledge, experience, and talent of, from which we all benefit so much. Let me just see. one thing, please. One thing, yeah. very important. If I can do what I'm doing now and what I have done during the last years, because you were here, Peter, it's because uh, Arno is here to propose my wines in the restaurant. It's because Pascaline uh, can propose uh, the, the, the same kind of wines uh, in the restaurant and, 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 and speak about these wines. And uh, I'll never forget how important you are all because um, um, alone it would be very difficult. Okay, if, you have, if we have nobody in front of you just to say to you that what you are doing is good, it's not possible. So thank you very much. Are you doing all the work, Laurent? We're just yeah. like messenger and passing along your wines. So you, you're the hard worker here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, okay, that's very nice of you, Laurent, but uh, without great wine, uh, our drought would be difficult. Yeah, the job is pretty easy you know, when you, <laughs> you have to. I don't know, I don't know. I, don't, I never considered my, that my job is difficult. No, but it's super, I have to say the, 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 the quality, the consistency for the price is spectacular also, which is something that we don't talk about, but like the price, uh, yeah, true. what we have yeah. in a bottle is, is, and from everything in your, in your range is, is top notch. You know, as you said, you, you care for, for the Van Pays, uh, the same way you care for the Chateau Neuf and you mm. can, and for the us rose, at, the, yeah. at the restaurant is amazing to be able to offer, the, to offer this kind of wine, you know, by the glass to so many people and, at, at a very, very fantastic fair price. Uh, so bravo for that because it's not necessarily the trend everywhere, you know? So yeah, speaking of rosé, your, your 2019 rosé is fantastic. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, um, um, I'm very happy to hear that and I, I'm not traveling a lot and um, uh, it's not very easy for me to realize that and uh, and my last trip in New York, and uh, this is incredible tasting in the restaurant I know, and 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 Pascaline. It was a, it was a, just a, an incredible moment for me yeah. because uh, I never think about that, never. And one of the things that we showed when you were there was was also not just your Chardonnay de Pop, but your superb Cote de Rhone. Um, and the rosé made me think about that. Um, those of us who know your wine so well know what a secret that Cote de Rhone is. Um, and I've had the great pleasure of tasting an old vintage of it that we thought for sure were Chateau Mr. Pop. It turned out to be 1995 Cote de Rhone. Uh, I think we just have one last question about somebody asking about the 2001 vintage. Laurent. 
How do you feel yeah. about the 2001? 2001? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, uh, one of the most easy year uh, for wine producer. It's just, um, it's like 1990, 16, 19. Uh, it's uh, all happened alone, okay? Uh, in the vineyard, no troubles so for the fermentation, no troubles. And uh, the balance is here. Yeah, I, I remember the freshness of this wine. And um, uh, I always like 2001, always. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, vintage. It's difficult to have a favorite vintage when you have one produce shop. So each, part, each year has a, a special thing for you. And, but all one uh, is, is very, 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 very interesting. Yeah, and, uh, and very easy for one producer. Well, as De Julien told you, in every vintage, the terroir speaks. Yeah. And not only in the lesser vintages, but in the great vintages too. And what's remarkable about all your wines is every year there's a, there's a unique expression of the terroir in that particular period of time, that particular vintage. Mm -hmm. Yes, but at the same time, some vintages are more easy to produce. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and some vintages are not are, are less popular than others. You know, if you compare 99, 98, and 2001, everybody will tell that 2001 and 98 are really, really, really bad. Uh, and, but 99 is one of my favorite vintages, an incredible vintage, an incredible balance. And, and yes, and, um, um, but all one has this um, particularity to be, uh, um, um, to be easy every, all around the time and um, and and um, and uh, everybody um, analyzed this vintage like the grape vintage and all the parameter was green all, all was green for the light was green for this vintage so uh, um, but all one is well yes it's one of the very easy year and very uh, I like this vintage yes definitely and just maybe give us an update quickly uh, about what's going on right now in the vine. Sorry. Now, now? No, what, what's what did what? you do today in the vineyard, Laurel? How are the vine? And how are the vine? Yeah. Uh, today I have um, I have plowed. I have um, how you say attaché lie tie. You tie the yeah tie uh, the yes, with uh, rattan. Mm. With rattan. I have used I have learned this uh, this process with a good friend of mine, uh, Jean Gonon in Saint Joseph. He has learned me this process because uh, last year I have planted some Syrah in Ishala. And uh, I will be very interesting to know to to do this process. Um, uh, we are doing a bourgeonnage. I don't know the, the term in English, a bourgeonnage. De shooting, de budding. This, okay. Um, a bourgeonnage um, now and uh, we we are always uh, controlling um, the disease to see uh, if uh, mildew, or germ, or black heart arrive. Um, at this time, we have a lot of wind, so it's very good because it dries the soil, it dries uh, the situation because it was humid uh, the last 15 days. Uh, it would be certainly necessary to, to make a treatment uh, to spray the culture sulfate. Uh, this uh, week, this uh, end of this week, in the end of this week, and uh, we try to control the the herbs, the weeds. Uh, we plowed and we cut, or we use sometimes a uh, pick, you know, uh, under the under the tree. But but you did suffer frost this year also, which is I think yeah. important. Like when we talked like a month ago, like it's uh, like a little bit unusual in the region, right? But it was. It can always uh, happen. Um, you know, um, the problem is more and more the, the, the vines uh, start earlier. And it's the, the, this phenomenon is not just in the south of France, and it's maybe less important in the south than in the north. Um, one of the reasons why the last years we have more risk of uh, frost is not because we have more frost 
done before. It's just because the vines start to grow earlier. So it's normal to have some frost in March and it can happen in April. Okay? Me, I remember one time in May. But when uh, the vines have not, has, has not start, when the frost arrives in March, it's not a problem. Okay? The problem is when, uh, when all starts. And this year it has started very, start very early. In my situation, for me, it happened not so bad because um, I was a sensation, I was quite sure that we will have frost. I, I decided to, in March, in November last year, to bottle the wines a little bit earlier than normally and to prune a little bit later than I, I, I'm doing uh, every year. And um, when the frost arrived, 10 hectares of my vines was not pruned. So they have not been affected by the frost because uh, the, the buds was uh, inside. So this was not green. And um, it affects the tot the, um, all my, 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 my plots in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire. It's uh, one of the most important frosts I have seen. But in the end, the damage uh, will be would be not so important, except if the flowering happen badly, because we don't know the or or it will happen. Maybe the frost affects the uh, infrared sense, so maybe the flowers. Uh, we will see now. It's, it's, this is this is this is a crucial period now, uh, a wonderful period because it smells so good in the vines. It's the flowering period, um, and. Um, and especially for Grenache, it's always a, a difficult period. Always, because the Grenache uh, is um, it, when it, it's sometimes it's too windy, sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too fresh, sometimes it's too. Pff, with Grenache, it's never easy. The flowering is never easy. Um, so we, are, we need we need a good vintage, okay. We need a really mm. good vintage, so we're going to finger cross uh, that there will be a great flowering and some yeah, wine. Yeah, you, you, you know, we will have it. You know what, we, uh, okay. I have no doubt with you, you will have uh, No, I mean, you know uh, what a uh, uh, famous wine producer always say, uh, our friend uh, Richard Lewis, he always say, my best vintage, vintage is next year. That's really Richard. Well, <laughs> and with you and Richard, there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Laurent. Thanks a lot, Laurent. Yeah, thank you, Laurent. Merci, c'est moi, merci. Ah, merci. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Laurent, for being here and hosting uh, with Pascaline and Arnaud and Peter. And uh, we'll be doing some more of these uh, for Wagon Selections, uh, so stay tuned for some more videos and uh, some Zoom chats. But uh, yeah. We're about uh, coming up on two hours now. So I think this is very enlightening, very interesting. And uh, I personally learned a lot. So I hope all of our viewers did as well. And uh, until then, uh, this, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you, Laurent. Bye-bye. Merci. Bye. 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 Bye.